Hey guys, welcome back to the final video in this grenade series. Today we're going to be taking a look at cinematic lights, post-production, and a little bit of the displacement maps that we were missing from last time. So, let's get to it. Very well guys, so let's get going with our uh, cinematic effect here. So, I'm going to open my scene, the M51 grenade render that we have here. And uh, I'm going to start doing a couple of things. First, I want to get rid of this plane. We're not going to use it anymore. I'm also going to get, uh, not rid of this guy, but I'm going to show you something very cool. We can go into the scale of the uh, Sky Dome light, and I'm just going to hit here uh, zero. So it's going to have zero scale. It's still going to be affecting the scene, but it's not going to be um, as intense. So what I want to do is I want to create this sort of like cinematic effect, cinematic scene with the whole thing. And I'm going to be focusing uh, in, in stages. We're going to be doing this in stages. So we're going to start with the, the little bit of a, like a blocking and modeling phase. And then we're going to jump onto the lights. We're going to do a little bit of effects. And then we're going to do textures and renders. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to be referencing this very cool movie called 1917. Probably saw that. If you haven't seen this movie, I strongly recommend you go and see it. It's a great movie, and it has some very, very cool, like, cinematic shots. Now, as you can see, one of the things that's very interesting about this film is that there's actually no, like, super intense, harsh contrast throughout most of the films. There's a couple of scenes where, where it really gets uh, very intense and interest, interesting, but for most of the scenes... It's, it's actually very flat, like this. Like, there's a lot of color and a lot, a lot of richness. There's, there's textures and stuff, but there's not a lot of, um, let's say, uh, contrast, like you, what you would expect, like this sort of thing. It, it, it's, it's not there always. So we're going to be using some of the scenes to inspire our, our construction. And the first thing I want to do is I want to create a little bit of an environment for these things. So I'm thinking about having, like, a, uh, like a trench. Is that the word? Trench? I think it's right. Trench, yeah, a trench. In Spanish, we call it trinchera, and uh, the trench war. Yeah, it's this things. So let's do it now. I don't want to. I don't want to model the whole thing, but I do want to have a little bit of, of something here. And uh, the way we're gonna do this is very simple. I'm gonna start with a plane. This one right here. I'm gonna make it bigger. So we need to think about the size of a grenade. This is something that we didn't do before. But usually, a grenade is what probably like 10 centimeters. So I'm gonna create a sphere and I'm gonna change the scale here to 10 because this scale right here is in centimeters. So this uh, sphere is a 10 units in scale. Um, it has a radius of one, so I think it has a radius of two like that to, to be properly uh, scale. So I'm just gonna grab all of the groups here. I'm actually gonna control G to group the groups and that way we can scale everything down to a more like traditional uh, size. So I would expect the grenades to be roughly about that size, I say. Now, I want the grenades to be inside of a trench, uh, like lying there on the trench. So how wide would the trench be? Probably like two meters. So this one, scaling Y is uh, a thousand. So that's um, 10, that would be 10 meters. I think 10 meters is a little bit too much. So let's do something like this. Then I'm gonna move the trench like this. And I'm gonna use this edge right here and this edge right here. I'm gonna extrude and I'm gonna extrude up and to the side create like the like the trench and then we're gonna select all of this control e extrude up and to the side now i'm gonna do the same trick that we did when we were modeling to create like a little bit of a path for the for the trench uh so i'm gonna go into curved surfaces uh create a curve let's go to the top view and i just want this trench to kind of like loop around like this so now we can select this edge right here, select the curve, we extrude along the curve and add some divisions. And there we go, we create this sort of like uh, trench effect. Uh, actually, it might be a good idea to just delete the sides first and the sides. And now I'm just gonna control E, extrude up. Yeah, extrude up and then offset to create like the like that effect, there we go, something like that. And then we just delete this guy right here. Most of this I don't care, so I can just erase, because now we're gonna go into our shot cam, and we're gonna find our shot. Uh, let's delete history first, so that all of that thing is uh, working nicely. So I'm gonna go camera, panels, look through selected. I'm actually gonna change the name of the camera to shot cam. And being on the trench is actually gonna be very helpful for us, because as you can see here, we're gonna be able to to be like really close to the grenades 
we're not going to see the ground. Like, there's no ground plane. We're just going to see probably the sky and stuff. Um, and we're going to be able to place the grenades in a very in a very nice way. So now, let's finish modeling this trench a little bit nicer. So I'm just going to go here to the, to the borders. And I'm just going to do a bevel. Small bevel, probably like two segments. Just it's a little bit rounder. Another detail that we could add is just like a cube. Let's use this to, to like fortify our trenches with like some wood supports. So we can just like position this right here. Let me turn off the screen rotate. There we go. Control D. Just like move them around. Control D. They don't have to be perfect. So it's just a little bit of a detail there, like an extra detail that we're adding. And always, always, always check your uh, camera or, or close to your camera because sometimes we, we worry about modeling a lot of things that you're not even going to see. So, for instance, there. You can just move some of these elements down. There we go. Uh, let me go to the shotgun again. Panels, loop to select it. Yeah, that looks good. Let's just get that into the ground. So see that we, we only need like a couple of these guys because all of the other guys are going to be covered by the grenades and, and everything else. So just having this is it's more than enough. I am going to add a little bit of ground plane. And the reason is we're eventually going to be using a, what's the word, a displacement map. So for the displacement to work a little bit better, we do need a little bit of ground plane here. Mostly there, because that's the like the border that we're going to be seeing. I'm going to uh, bevel this guy. There we go. So now we go back to the shotgun panels, ultra select. I'm actually going to go panels, and I'm going to say tear off copy. That way we don't have to be like jumping in and out. We, we already have this thing uh, right here. So so this is the, the scene. Now that we have this set up, we can start working with the light. We want to make sure that we have a nice cinematic feel to this. I'm going to go to the camera, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the focal length to a 24. 24 is going to give us this very nice, like, dramatic uh, focal length. You're going to see a lot more distortion going on here. So it's going to be really, really cool for us. And, uh, and yeah, we're going to be in a, in a good spot right here. So now, light. We're going to go into the Sky, Sky Dome light. And before I started this video, I actually downloaded this Canon 4K AXR. One of the things that you want to do is you want to make sure that when you're doing some sort of cinematic light, you have the most control on the light. So by choosing this sort of uh, image where it's very flat, there's not a lot of contrast on the light, I'm going to be able to, to tweak and move the light exactly the way I want. So I'm going to hit open. And uh, now if we go into Arnold and we render this uh, frame from the shotgun, of course, we're going to get this. Very flat, very like boring light, but it's exactly what we're going for. Now, I think I'm going to delete one of the grenades. I think two grenades look good. But I'm, of course, going to modify them and move them a little bit better. So, for instance, this grenade. I want to be... I want this this one to be, like, there on the on the floor. And then this one... Whoop, grab the whole group. Probably, like, laying down on the side like this. And again, the displacement, once we add it uh, with, the, with the ground and stuff, it's going to make these things look very, very nice. Let's, let's create a little bit of overlap like that. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, that looks good. That looks really, really good. I think this one's a little bit low. So let's just move this guy up a little bit, something like that. Same for this guy. There we go. That looks way more interesting, right? So, so yeah, we have this very nice grenade. Now we talk about the lights. We're going to be doing some, some light setup. So the way we're going to do this is the following. We're going to go into the Sky Dome light. I'm going to go into the attributes. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the exposure to like a minus four or something. Like I, I don't want the, the HDR to, to get that much light into the scene. Like I want the light to be very, very dull. And I want to control the light uh, specifically how I want, how, how I want it. So if we take a look again at 1917, I really like this effect. It's very soft light. This is actually some, something that I, this is like fan made because on the, on the original movie, you don't have as much contrast. Uh, but there's a scene on, the, on this uh, particular movie where it's night, it's a night scene. And there's a lot of contrast, like look at this beautiful thing. 
It's a lot of contrast. You're pretty much just seeing the shadows. And then you have this one where, where there's like bombs exploding. And, and for some moments, the whole thing gets like really illuminated. And then you, you go back into like complete darkness. So I am actually going to look for war cinematography just to get a little bit more inspiration. Let's see if we can find something interesting. Like, uh, this is very traditional, like, very foggy, and I am gonna add fog, but I, I don't wanna, like, overdo it. Um, we're gonna go for this, like, sort of dramatic feel. So I feel, what would be nice? Let me think. Because I really like this high contrast thing. Let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot at a high contrast. So, so we need to think about how this would work, right? Like, we have this very, like, flat scene right now, very flat illumination, which is fine. I'm going to actually increase the exposure just a little bit. Let's see, like, a minus two, or probably, like, a minus, minus three, just to give darker. But I'm going to use color temperature, and I'm going to start pushing the temperature of the light, like, down. Like, really, really down. Let's stop, and let's give it another go there. That's not really giving me that much light, but that's fine. Let me turn that off, then. We'll do that in post-production. So with this, now I'm gonna introduce like a very bright light, like some farm not far from here is, is just like burning and, uh, and I wanna add that effect. So I'm gonna go into Arnold, let's stop this. Arnold, lights, and we're gonna create a, an area light. Very big. Bigger lights, or actually sh uh, smaller lights give sharper shadows and bigger lights give bigger shadows. So, or softer shadows. So I'm gonna go here. Let's go with like a 20 in exposure. We're definitely gonna use color temperature. There we go, look at that, see? Now let's uh, let's increase the exposure a little bit. Okay, that's good. And this is where the trenches were a nice idea because what I wanna do here is I wanna like cover the 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 grenades in, in shadow and just have this as a bounce light. Let's make this really dark, really orange. Well, not that orange because we can we can always modify this sort of like temperatures in post production, so something like this I think I think looks fine. Um, I am gonna change one thing though. I'm gonna change the spread of the light. I'm gonna lower it so that it's only like focusing on this area. That means that I'm also gonna have to change the the exposure here. But look at this, it's looking better, right? Now I don't want to go with all like extreme overexposed whites and extreme overexposed uh, blacks. Because that's gonna it's gonna be very difficult to color manage later on. So usually when we're working on this sort of stuff, you want to keep it as nice as possible. I am gonna go a little bit darker here. There we go. And now we need to add like a secondary light, right? Like something else that's uh, giving this uh, elements a little bit more light. So maybe maybe there was a soldier that left a torchlight or like a lamp, an oil lamp or something over here. So I'm gonna create Arnold lights area light. I'm gonna move this to the side here. I'm gonna change this to a cylinder light. Well, let's add a lot of exposure as well. I'm also gonna use color temperature and make this warmer. Now I'm gonna change this to a quad as well. I wanna I wanna really control how this thing is looking. There we go. So like a really low light here. I'm gonna really bring the spread down because I just wanna be focusing the, the grenades like this. And then of course the, the exposure is gonna go down as well. So it's kind of like a spotlight, right? Like we're creating a sort of a spotlight. I'm actually gonna change to disc. I'm gonna get this thing closer. I rotate it around so that we get a little bit of like a glimmer of hope, right? Like a like a nice light, like hitting the grenades just at an angle that's making them the important piece of the of the element. Now I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go crazy. I'm just gonna add a little bit of, of effect there. See that? So it's super, super, super subtle. Like it's not like intense at all. Um, one thing that's very important is how we use the environment to create more interesting shapes. So I'm gonna use just cubes here that are gonna be off camera. And these cubes are gonna add forms and shadows into the scene that are gonna really make the whole thing. So think about like a tree, right? Like maybe we have a tree here and see how now we have a shadow here. That shadow is really gonna allow me to, to express that 
this is a living, breathing world, right? And there's there's things that affect the way uh, light and elements work. Same thing here. Like I can add another cube, go here in front of the of the grenades, and I can use this cube to to block a little bit of the of the light that's going into the grenades. Kind of like a like a light blocker, pretty much. So if I want to remove a little bit of the like the light that's hitting the grenades, I can just start moving this thing. For instance, I'm going to rotate this thing around. And that way we can control in a very, like, uh, we call it a, a Mexican way because it's uh, it's not something that you might do on, a, on an actual production because this is going to uh, stop a lot of things. But here it works really, really nice. Finally, we can add some sort of, like, rim light. Remember the rim light, which is really, really good. It's really helpful. So... We're in the night, maybe there's a little bit of like moonlight or something, and we're gonna have like a nice rim light hitting all the upper areas of our of our scene. So I'm gonna hit hit stop right there. I'm gonna go into Arnold lights. Let's do another area light. This is gonna be a big area light. I want soft shadows. And it's gonna be coming from the back here. Like this. Let's start with like a high exposure. There we go. Temperature, we're gonna make it cooler. Not super cool. Oh, yeah, we can go really high there. And now we start playing with exposure. It's just a little bit. It's it's subtle, right? It's 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 just a little bit of light here and there. Could move this around and and make it sure that we get like those nice little like hits there. Okay, if I turn intensity off, you're gonna see how this thing is helping me balance the colors of the elements a little bit better. And we're creating this very nice. Now, this doesn't mean that we're not going to be able to get some very nice contrast later on. We're going to be able to do a lot of things in post-production. Uh, I just want to show you the, the general thought that goes into my head when we're doing this sort of uh, elements. So let's stop here. Now, you can see there's a little bit of a cube there. That's fine. But it's, uh, it's contaminating the scene. So let's get rid of it. And now let's talk about um, what's the word about the displacement maps. Okay, so I'm going to save the scene. Yes, and I'm gonna jump into my height version. Now, height maps, guys, are these things that we normally use to create um, displacement, right? We're gonna be using the height map to create something called a displacement. And what displacement does is very simple. You're gonna have your plane, your geometry, whatever, and you're gonna divide the geometry at render time, and you're gonna push and pull the vertices of that geometry to conform to the shapes of the displacement map. Usually displacement maps are EXRs, uh, they're, they're very high dynamic range images, and the, the white points will push the vertices forward and the black points will push them down. So depending on how intense you want the effect, you're going to be able to modify that uh, in just a second. So I created this substance node last time. I'm just going to reload it so that all the elements are, are there. I'm actually going to change the size to 2K so that we have a very nice uh, effect. And you can see that when you're using the, the Substance plugin, you automatically get the height information plugged into the into the whole network, which is really, really handy. Otherwise, you would have to do it yourself. It's not difficult. The only thing you need is a node that I'm going to show you right here, which is this um, displacement shader. And instead of connecting this thing onto the shader itself, it goes onto the, um, onto the shading group. Not the, not the material shader, but the shading group. So as you can see, we have the EXR. It's exporting the alpha, and everything is correct. It's an it's a it's a very nice uh, map there. And uh, one thing I do need is I need to make sure that the UVs of this thing are as nice as possible. Another great idea, or not great idea, great suggestion is make sure that the that the distribution of polygons is as close as possible to to even. So something like this, so that the displacement works in the best possible way. Now this thing, I'm actually gonna say mesh smooth. To, to get even more geometry, and, and this is gonna be my my uh, my basic uh, geometry here. I'm gonna go into uh, UVs, and I'm gonna say UV planar mapping from Y axis from the top. It's gonna create a, just like a flat plane. And then on the UV editor, of course, I need to unfold. So let's just unfold, there we go, so that's, that's perfect. Uh, now, if I assign the material, which is called, should, that's why you should always name your materials, but this one's called Dirt Growth. Right click, assign existing material, uh, dirt growth. I should be able to visualize how this thing is tiling. And as you can see, the tiling is completely wrong. 
So I'm gonna jump back here, gonna go into my uh, place to detexture, and instead of going onto the node and making this a 4K or an 8K or whatever, I'm just gonna duplicate this and say, hey, you know what? You're gonna be repeating this whole thing, like the whole UVs, four times and four times. Four times on U, four times on, on V. And as you can see, this is getting a little bit closer. I still think it's a little bit low. So I'm gonna go six times and six times. That looks that looks better. That looks like I what I would expect to have here on a, on a trench. So now I'm gonna save real quick. I'm gonna hit the geometry and I'm gonna go where it says Arnold. Down here on the subdivision, we're gonna activate a subdivision cut, uh, called Cadmod Clark, which is a specific subdivision that divides this polygon in a very efficient way. And we're gonna say, let's start with three subdivisions for now. Uh, on the displacement attributes, you're gonna see the height value. We're gonna be adjusting that in just a second. So. Let me save this again real quick because uh, displacement is a little bit heavy. So you will see a performance hit on your computer and we're just going to hit render. It's going to convert everything, of course. Let's just give it a second. And there we go. So as you can see right now, there is very little height um, information happening. It seems like something is not exported. Let me close this real quick. Sometimes you need to just like open and close this for it to properly work. Okay, so now what we can do is we can start pushing the height information a little bit higher. So like in, we can say like five, um, still not high enough. Let's try 50, I'm gonna go really crazy. There we go. So with 50, you can see that uh, the, the height is now actually working. We're getting this very nice deformation. However, one thing that we're missing is iterations. We need more, so let's go four. Let's go with four iterations. And what I would expect this is a little bit more subdivision as you can see here. So things are looking a little bit nicer. Uh, let's try five. Let's see if my computer doesn't break. Let's give it a go. Yeah, it seems to be working, but the texture looks a little bit weird. Let's go back to like a one. Let's see if that works. It might be that the texture is still too low res will be weird to be honest let me let me do something crazy here i'm gonna do another smooth so mesh smooth so now this thing is like really 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 heavy and then i'm gonna go into my hyper shade and just to make sure that we're using the proper uh, texture so i'm gonna go here yeah we're using 2040k let's just hit reload to make sure that it is like really reading that we're using uh 2k textures Let's just give it a couple of seconds here. There we go. So the reason why I think we're doing good is because if I see this here, you can see the size of, of things and, and they look they look okay. But I'm a little bit concerned about the fact that here in the render, they do not look okay. Let's give it another go. It says mesh not exported, polysurface shape one. Okay, so there's there's some sort of error here. It should be this one. So I'm gonna delete history and I'm just gonna call this, let's call this ground plane. I'm gonna close this, Arnold, open the Arnold render view again. Let's hit render again. Because whenever you hit render, what happens is Arnold goes into its like memory and, and brings all the all the materials inside of it. So that's why I'm a little bit worried the fact that it's not working as intended. It's taking a little bit longer. It could be because since we divided this and then we added the, the iterations, it's uh it's a little bit bigger there. Could definitely be the 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 height it's a little bit weird though usually usually with this let's enable auto bump let's see if that works that should give us a little bit more detail because i want to see i i, I want to really see like the like the grains on the on the plane and, and we should be able to so let's just give it another actually let me stop this i'm gonna bring this back to four Let's see how this looks. 
this is one way to do displacements. I'm, I'm, I'm preparing some very cool tutorials, by the way, where we're going to be doing some ZBrush uh, sculpting. And uh, when we bring like a vector displacement from ZBrush, the process is a little bit different, but it, it, it should accomplish the same thing. Like we want to make sure that when we render at render time, we're projecting the elements in such a way that things work nicely. Wow. What the hell was this? That's really weird. You know what else could be? It could be that my graphics card is not strong enough to load all the memory. So let me try it with the CPU. Because that right there, it, it, it seems to me like a like a graphics card issue. It's, it doesn't have enough memory to load all the like 4K textures at the same time. So yeah, that that's okay. Let's let's increase the height here. Height is pretty much the intensity of the of the displacement map. And we should get a little bit more effects here. Like I know it's working because if I if I go all the way to 50, which is really intense, like we shouldn't be needing to go all the way to this position. You can see that it is actually like moving the vertices up and down. It could be like a really big uh, surface and that's why we're, we're having issues here. So let's try half of this. Let's do like 25 and see how this looks. Yeah, that looks that looks a little bit better. So at least we get some some pebbles and stuff. And most of this, don't worry, we're gonna be blurring them out with with some uh, some very nice uh, techniques. So so uh, it's okay. Let's go let's go twenty, just a little bit lower. Just a little bit lower there. There we go. I'm gonna hit Control S to save this real quick. Let's stop. Let me see if I can get my graphics card to to work again. Now that we're not like pushing this to like super intense boundaries, now it's it's the it's definitely it's definitely the um, the memory. So that's fine. There we go. So let's just go back to CPU. Cool. So now we're gonna talk about uh, certain extra things. Like for instance, this wood blocks right here. Do we need to bring a, a wood material and texture this properly? Not really. We can just add like a very basic, like AI standard surface. And I'm just gonna add a color that makes it pop a little bit more. So for instance, on the color, let's grab like this dirt color and then let's just make it lighter, like wood, like this. Because at the end of the day, those guys are going to be uh, blurred. So as long as we only have like the general idea of how they're supposed to look, we should be fine. I think we can actually go a little bit lighter like that. And that's going to work perfectly. Now, one thing I am going to add is fog. I want to add a little bit of fog so that the whole ambient looks a little bit more uh, spooky, right? So I'm going to go onto the options here. I'm going to go into the Arnold renderer and we're going to go into environment. And on the atmosphere, I'm going to create an AI um, fog. There we go. So now, if I were to render, we're gonna get this fog. However, one of the issues that you're seeing here is that uh, the blocks that we added, this one spe specifically, is actually like affecting the way the fog works, I believe. Either that or a clip plane. So I personally don't love the fog uh, plugin here, but let's give it a go. Over here, you're gonna see the, no, up here on the fog options, let's, let's see. We can modify some of the settings here. So by increasing the distance, we increase the distance of the fog. As you can see, it's there we go, it's the height. So we're increasing the height, and again we're just playing around with the with the elements here. Let's do like a 1.005. There we go, that's a little bit better. I definitely do want this whole thing to be close to me, 0 0.002, 0 0.001, there we go, that looks better. It, it's doing this thing where, where as it gets closer to the camera, we get a little bit less of the of the foggy effect, but that's not exactly what I want, because I, I feel like if I push this like way, way too far, we're, we're gonna lose some of the, of the very nice effects that we have. So no, I'm gonna stop it, I'm gonna use traditional, instead of fog, I'm just gonna uh, right click here, and I'm just gonna create a AI uh, atmosphere volume. I like this one a little bit better because with this one, I can play around with the density and as you can see, it actually affects the whole thing. So let's stop this right here. 
let's do a little bit of attenuation there we go see how we get this very cool looking cinematic effect so it's a little bit more like it right And again, by, by just playing around with, with the values, we should be able to get something that gets close to, to what we want. Like this right here already looks very, very cinematic. It's a little bit too much, I think. So let's try 0 0.003 or 0 0.001. Just a little bit of fog over there, right? So uh, probably 0 0.002. It's just a little bit of this effect going pretty much everywhere. And as you can see, we're getting there. We're getting into this very, very cool looking effect. One of the things that I would definitely recommend is now that we have a lot of resolution, we can definitely play it around with, with adding some like variance to the whole thing. Like not everything has to be like completely straight and completely like clean. So we can move some of these vertices around. Like this. And that's also going to change the silhouette of our of our scene, right? Like, not only are we going to get a very nice effect, we're also going to get, like, this interesting thing here. So, for instance, right here, let's, like, really push this, this border there so that we get some nice silhouette going pretty much all around the, the elements. There we go. So yeah, this is this is uh, I would say one of the one of the stopping points of the of the demo, right? Like we're gonna we're gonna be creating this effect and we're gonna be creating this very nice uh, element right here. Now let's talk about um, the camera. There's there's one uh, there's a couple of things that we can add on the camera to make this thing even even nicer. So I do think I am gonna increase the light here just a tad bit because I want just to see the grenades a little bit better. Something like this, I, th I would say. And then I'm going to jump onto the camera. And the camera some has an effect, a very cool effect called depth of field. So I am going to go into the Arnold options. I'm not going to use this depth of field. I'm going to use the depth of field down here. I'm going to click enable depth of field. So if I hit play now and I start increasing, increasing the aperture size, you're going to see that everything gets blurred or we should start getting a little bit of blurriness. I think we do need to turn this on. And let's just hit play. Well, now I, I think right now you can see the depth of field here on the on the screen, but we're not seeing it here. We're not seeing it here on the elements. So we're gonna go here. Let's turn this on. And one thing I definitely need to know is what's the distance between my object and the camera. So if I go look through selected and I click this object, I can go into windows. Sorry, let's stop this for a second. We can go uh, display, heads up display, object details. And this thing is 100 units away from my camera. So now if I select the camera, the focus distance is going to be 100 uh, units. And now by changing the aperture size, And of course, turning this on. I think I turn on the the thing on the on the perspective camera. By turning this thing on and changing the aperture size, we're gonna be able to get this sort of uh, depth of field effect. We are in the shot cam, right? Yes. There we go. So as you can see, the more the more aperture size we have, and you can go even higher than this. Like if I say fifty like everything is going to be blurred out. It's not something that usually happens in the real world. We find something like a 2.1 or 2.4. It's really good. As you can see, everything is going to be out of focus. I don't think we need that much. So I'm going to go with like a 0.5 because I do want to see at least this main uh, grenades in focus. Mm -hmm. That looks that looks good. And as you can see, the, the trench over here, the woods, everything, all of those things are going to start getting out of focus. I think we can actually push the third area light a little bit higher in exposure. There we go. That's also going to give us a nice, a nice effect there. Probably not that much though. Let's do a 21, uh, 22. Yeah, 22 looks good. 
and that's it like as you can see we're getting this very nice cinematic effect on top of the of the whole thing so now the only thing that we need to do is we need to finish the render and bring this thing into um what's the word into photoshop to to continue working on the on the post-production side of things let me think if there's anything else we can add here and we can of course animate the camera to to have a little bit of movement but that's gonna take a little bit longer uh probably move the ground plane here a little bit so i'm just gonna select this face Just move this down a little bit so that we get something there. Oh, I know what I can show you. You know that in trenches, sometimes they get this, um, they have like boxes and sacks and stuff. Things just lying around. So we can definitely start adding some of this. <laughs> Let me go into the perspective and turn off. Turn off uh, depth of field. There we go. So I'm just going to add like a box here. Kind of like if this was like a crate or something. And again, all of these things are going to be out of focus. So I'm not worried about texturing or doing anything to them. Because they're just going to be there as, as part of like the props of the scene. Let's grab like a box. Let's do like some sand uh, sandbags. So I'm going to start with something like this. I'm going to say mesh smooth and then another smooth and then i'm just gonna grab like all of these vertices oh no soft selection and just create this sort of like sandbag shape and then you can control d control d Control D. Grab all of this. Control D. Move them up. Give them a little bit more volume. And then just like, whoa. Manually move a couple of them so they are not all in the same direction. Grab the whole thing. Combine. Delete history. These are usually bigger. I'm just gonna bring this to the top here. For instance, this guy. Just gonna rotate. Grab it like this edge with soft selection. Create this sort of effect. Control D. Let's bring the same asset like all the way over here. Control D. Let's bring it like on this side. I'm not sure if the, if the camera is going to capture that, but we have it. And all those little things and effects. Yes, yeah, you can see that we have a little bit of silhouette there. All of those little things and effects are going to show on the render, right? Like, see how, how they're just silhouettes. No need to texture. No need to, to do anything. They're just silhouettes that are occupying in space and giving more life to the whole thing. That's the secret of, of, of set dressing, right? And props. The fact that a simple box like this one by just having this on top of the other ones. See now, there's a little bit of a darker silhouette there. So people know there's something there. They don't know what it is, but they know that there's something there and it's probably gonna be an important thing. We can do the same thing. Like for instance, that back here, we don't have anything. What if we have like, just like a cylinder, like maybe like a windmill or something. You know, in World War uh, One, we had this very rural uh, setting where everyone was fighting in like very, isolated spaces so maybe there was like a like a windmill that that someone is using as a shape there sometimes if this happens you do need to like open up their Arnold render view again so that the shape loads properly let's give it just a second okay maybe the fog's a little bit too dense at that point i can try bringing this guy forward okay there's the shape there that actually looks good. Yeah, so that that means that the fog is a little bit too intense. That's fine. I mean, one thing we can try and do is add a new material to this thing. Go for like a same thing, a standard surface, but go for like a very dark color. And sometimes by having a dark color, 
the the silhouette is gonna show through or you can go to the to the fog the atmosphere volume and let's lower the density by one level there the only issue with that and i and i think that might not be the best idea for not for us is that by doing that uh we're, we're gonna start seeing more of the of the bags and of the boxes and, and since they're not texture we, we don't want to give away so just having a little bit of something there that's fine because on the on the alpha channel in this case we have the whole alpha but you can see that it's there right it's a little bit of a silhouette there although having this thing behind this light look kind of cool there you go look at that difference so now that does look like the moon like up here and we have this thing right here let's do it like a windmill now that we're here let's 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 really do it like a windmill so i'm just gonna grab like another box here make it big let's create like the sort of like the the broad shape here needs to be physically correct right so i'm gonna move the point there control d this thing is going to be hitting the, the ground so we definitely need to grab this whole things move them up so that the blades do not hit the ground or at least not there there we go and now we render we have some interesting shapes over there Again, not completely like visible, but they're gonna be there. We could try like grouping the whole thing here and rotating. Let's center the pivot point and rotating it so that uh, so we see this sort of like cross shape. Yeah, you can see it there. That looks that looks interesting. I mean, that that already adds a little bit of a, of a cinematic touch to the to the whole thing. I do think it's a little bit too too close to the to the light, so I'm gonna just let's stop that. Push it back a little bit. So we should see a little bit of the silhouette there, like poking through the fog, but it's, it's not gonna be uh, like moving everything. And there we go. So so that's it for this phase. I'm gonna have to pause the video real quick, guys. It's just gonna be a quick jump for you, but it's gonna take me a couple of minutes because I wanna make sure that we get this render uh, nice and clean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into my render options. I'm gonna see if I can rescue my, my graphics card and see if I can do it with the, with the graphics card. And uh, I'm just gonna wait for the full render. We're gonna be doing a, a 1920 by 1080. This one right here. So it's definitely gonna take a little bit of time because it's gonna be quite a bigger image. But we should be able to to get it. And I'm gonna up the samples a little bit and everything just to just to get a very nice look. Then we're gonna bring this into Photoshop and add a couple of extra little flares here and there. So hang on tight. It's just gonna be a quick jump for you. There we go. Very well, guys. So the image is ready. As you can see here, we have all the very nice details. Even the, the windmill kind of like shows through the fog, which is very, very cool. So I'm gonna go here, file, save image. And usually I save this as EXRs because that's the that's the best uh, kind of uh, element. But I'm going to show you how you can even with this, with a simple JPEG, you can go and create something very cool. So there we go. Let's jump into Photoshop. And now comes the post production. So a lot of people think that once you do a render in Maya. That's it, right? Like that's how it's supposed to look and you're not gonna be modifying or adding any sort of detail. And that's that can't be farther from the truth. There's a lot of things that we add on top of the render once the render is done. And uh, and that definitely is gonna create a different sort of feel to it. So here in Photoshop, I'm gonna open the, the image right here. And let's start adding a couple of things. So the first thing I always like to do, and if you've got my, um, my intro to Maya course, you know that I do this with one of the activities is adding this sort of like, a, oh, well, double click. Okay, we're gonna duplicate this image and we're gonna create, create a copy because this one we wanna lock and hide in case we ever wanna go back. So I'm gonna create a letterbox. So this is just gonna make my shot look a little bit wider. There we go. Uh, now it's time that we start playing with a little bit of the tone mapping and elements that we want. So I'm going to be using adjustment layers. I'm going to start with a hue and saturation. And the first thing I want to do is I want to reduce the saturation a little bit. I want this to look a little bit more uh, without that much color, just, just flatter in general. Then I'm going to use a curves. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my blacks a little bit darker and push my lights a little bit higher to, again, create a little bit of, uh, of an interesting contrast there. It might be a little bit too dark on your screen, but my screen looks it looks OK. Uh, the cool thing about this layers is that you can always go here and change. And one of my favorites, very basic of this very basic, I'm not a post-production guy, I just know the basics. It's a color balance. So I'm going to go into the shadows and we're going to go for uh, cool shadows. So I'm going to start pushing like the cool colors of the shadows. And I'm going to go into the highlights. I'm going to go for warmer highlights because of the fire, right? Now this layer, we can actually go into like different uh, effects and we can create something very interesting. Like if you play around with the different uh, modes, we can go for like this, uh, I like this sort of like screen. And then I'm just going to lower the opacity because I do want to have a little bit of, of effect, but not as much as you can see here. Uh, we can, of course, add a little bit uh, like a vignette. Vignette is usually a, a good thing as well. So I'm going to create a new layer down here. And with a dark color, usually not black, but very dark and a soft brush. I'm just going to add a little bit of vignette here on the, on the sides. Not everywhere, usually here on the ground. I'm going to go with like an overlay and then just lower this so that we give the grenades a little bit more uh, like focus, right? Like all of the all of the elements are going are going there. Now, I would expect there to be a couple of like sparks and um, and embers and stuff. So I'm going to go for uh, sparks texture. And you're usually going to find this sort of thing. This is very common in like war movies, like this sort of like embers going from other places. Like even this is very, very cool. Let's let's see if we can use this. Oh, so we're going to copy this here. And I want this embers to be coming from from this side. So I'm going to do something like this. And then we're gonna do like a like a screen, and with a an eraser we can erase some of these elements, and just add a little bit of something there. I want to add some stronger ones uh, back there, so let me go for a different image, like uh, like this one. I think is fine. Even this one. Copy image. We're gonna place this right about here. Again, soften them up a little bit. Go with like a screen. And then using the the sandbags that we have there, we're gonna just like modify. See how, how that really like brings the whole scene together. We create this very interesting effect. Let's go for some camera dirt. This is very grungy. I'm going for a very grungy style, not super clean. Uh, of course, depending on what you wanna do, you can, you can generate like different sort of effects. Uh, this one, I think, is, is looking good. I'm going to go for a sharpen. Uh, renders tend to be very soft. They, they sometimes apply this sort of like like element. So I'm going to go for a sharpen here. Not as extreme. My brother just bought a game. <laughs> and there we go. OK, so that's sharpen, as you can see. Whoa. Uh, filter, sharpen, smart sharpen, just to just to crunch the, the borders a little bit. And uh, we were looking for the camera dirt, right? Let's give it another go. There we go. So I'm looking for, for this sort of effect, like a like an old film, like scratches kind of thing. Like even those fingers look kind of cool. I don't want to go super extreme, so let's go here with something like this. Control V. Oh. I'm pasting them somewhere else. Sorry. Control T. It's just. Do this here. Any image that you have with black, you can always just screen, and that's going to get rid of the blacks. And then, of course, lower the opacity. Just to, to add a little bit of texture to the whole to the whole thing. Now, another thing that's very common is something called chromatic aberration, which is when um, when the borders of the image shift slightly. It's a little bit more common in sci-fi stuff, but I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm just going to go to the red channel here, select the whole red channel. And with V, I'm just going to move the red channel like two pixels to the left. And I'm going to grab the blue channel and move it two pixels to the right. And now when we see the whole thing, you're going to see that there's a little bit of chromatic aberration. See that? And that effect, it's good. It's, it's not, it's not going to save your render if, if your render is bad, of course. But it's going to add that little bit of like um, camera errors, camera like malfunctions that is going to make things look good. Like you can see here how the how the effect like the borders of things are, are really gonna are really gonna make the the whole thing 
Uh, and now let's add like a soldier silhouette. Like, why not? Like, we can go for like a soldier silhouette. Uh, World War One. And let's see if we can find a silhouette that kind of matches the, the camera angle that we're going for. Like this guys right here, these are cool. So I'm just gonna copy this image. I'm gonna paste on the on the full channel here. Bring them beneath usually beneath all the, the effects. Let's have them there on the background. I'm gonna go select color range and select the color range of the of the elements there. And then just delete everything else. So control I to to invert. Sorry, Control Shift I to invert the selection, and then just delete. So we only get the the soldiers. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and then Control L levels. Let's darken them. I think that looks cool, but I'm gonna go with just two soldiers. Or maybe the other one's getting lost in the mists, like this. Because I, I want to make sure that the grenades are, are the ones that are, uh, like, the, the, the ones that have the attention. So I'm probably gonna just delete the opacity. It's just like a like small nod, right? Like, when people look at the image and they, like, really, really look closely into the image, they're gonna they're gonna see this kind of thing. And, uh, and yeah, I mean... This is pretty much it. I'm not sure what else I can show you in this uh, particular effect, but for I think for a uh, almost an hour demo, this is this is pretty cool. Uh, what did we see? We saw how to properly use height maps to get the effect. I'm still gonna show you the the height maps in in other videos to to really show how we can actually like push things and pull things into into account. But you can see that it, it is working. Like the little things here. I think the the geometry was a little bit too big for for the kind of effect that I was going for. Uh, but still, we get some nice displacement there that's going to make sure that these things look uh, a little bit better, right? And a little bit of cinematic post-production here in Photoshop. Like, if we take all of these elements and just group them into a single layer, this is what we got from Maya, and this is what we get from the cinematic effect. So, as you can see, quite a bit of change, quite a bit of elements, some interesting things here and there. Uh, this is what we what we do. This is what, we, what we're meant to do as artists. We're meant to take something, take a concept, and move it all the way through the production pipeline until we get something like this. So I'm going to save this thing. I'm going to save this an, as an image. You're probably going to see it on the thumbnail as well. I'm just going to show you something real quick. Let's call this cinematic render. So if you're preparing your portfolio, this is a portfolio tip for all of you guys who are about to finish school or, or you want to start preparing for, for a studio job or something, Presenting something like this, followed by something like this, followed by something like this, it's going to open a whole lot of doors for you guys. Why? Not only because you're able to present a concept from start to finish, from modeling all the way to cinematic production, but also because you're going to be showing the director, showing the recruiters that you have the eye and that you understand that your prop is going to belong somewhere. It's going to belong on a scene, it's going to belong on a video game, it's going to belong on a commercial. So you know that you're not just going to be modeling for the sake of modeling. I love modeling. I, I love teaching modeling. I love all the process uh, that surrounds modeling. But I know that my props are not just for modeling. I'm not just a modeler. I'm a 3D artist. I'm a 3D producer. So I want to make sure that when I create something, it has a purpose. We're going to be bringing this thing and going all the way until we find it in a very nice element. Now imagine if we were to do like a little bit of a pan shot inside of Maya, which is very easy. I can do it super quick here. Let me show you. Like I can do the render super quick because the render took five minutes. So it's going to take slightly longer. But if I go into my shot cam, panels, look through selected. Let's say we want to do like a, a five second animation. So what I can do is I can start right about here. And then end right about here. And now if I render this... This is what I would see. Now imagine, just imagine in your, in your mind that we have this five second animation and you're hearing like just steps or, or some gunshots far away with a little bit of sound production. And you pretty much have a shot for like a, like establishing shot for a movie or a, or a render or a commercial or something. This is what we do. This is, what, this is how we implement all of the things that we've learned into creating something that we can sell as a product that we can add into a complete package, right? Not only are we doing like a very cool grenade, 
we did the whole whole process it's like a this was like a, a small master class for you guys for those for those of you that have been modeling and texturing and now rendering you're gonna get a lot out of this now if you want to learn even more about this if you want to learn all the techniques that i can show you about mash a little bit about bifrost more modeling techniques surface modeling sculpting we of course have the courses so check down below on the comments make sure to like subscribe and uh leave me comments down there i've been going through the comments and i'm, I'm answering questions as well if you have any questions just feel free to leave it down there on the comments and I'll, I'll be happy to help you and uh yeah hopefully with all of this information you're very well prepared to produce some very cool renders so that's it for me i'll see you back on the next one bye bye